guys, welcome to another amazing task. This one is by Laponier32, one of the first Spyro Tassers ever in the history of Spyro Tassing. This guy just came out recently, a couple weeks ago, with a money bags percent task in Spyro 2, where he aims, I'm assuming, to talk and exchange fair wares with money bags for the entire run. So without further ado, let's get right into it. See this amazing PlayStation logo. Hold on. Got to get the sound. Oh, yeah. Hold on. One more time. One more time. Okay. Okay. Extra loud. Extra loud. Here, I'll turn it down. <laughs> Hold on, leave it, leave it loud. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If that shit was your childhood, man, leave a comment, all right? That's, th that sound is where it's, yeah, turn it up. <laughs> so yeah, so this is gonna be a, another task. Uh, I've really been enjoying doing these task reactions. They, uh, they're a good time. I just got done with a day of runs, by the way, as you can see by my beautiful TV with the PS2 behind me. So yeah, hello YouTube to everyone in my Twitch chat up there. Um, big thank you to everyone who subbed today, but yeah, let's get into this task here. Uh, now, normally Spyro 2 speedruns are going to start with a um, with a, a lot more collection. I mean, a 100% speedrun would, coll would collect all the gems behind him first. So it looks like uh, the idea with this task is we're collecting just enough gems in order to just pay for money bags. So he's just going for the, for the most valuable ones. So the routing already is something that I'm pretty sure you wouldn't really see in any other run of this game. So you can actually skip, I, I'm pretty sure it's like if you just mash hard enough, you can uh, skip text boxes, but not cancel the audio. By the way, you guys probably hear this through my mic a little, turn it down. Yeah, so um, I'm pretty sure he just mashes like um, really hard or like a frame perfect text box skip in order to uh, keep the audio going there. There might be some more nuance to that, I'm not sure. Keep in mind, I'm not a Spyro 2 speedrunner. But yeah, notable differences of this game between Spyro 1 speedrunning uh, is that flame charging, this technique where he flames and makes the gems home in, you could do it from a lot further away in this game. And also that, what you just, just saw of him kind of surfing up the enemy, that's a trick called, <laughs> I shit you not, Sproder Man, where uh, you can do double jumps against certain uh, angled walls and enemies. Of course, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with the double jump mechanic in this game where you do a neutral full hop and then charge at the top to get like an extra jump out of it, so to speak. Uh, and yeah, that was, that was actually a very satisfying glimmer to watch. It didn't, and you know, truth be told, it doesn't look too tassy yet. It doesn't look like, okay, he's completely breaking the game crazy, you know? Sure, that text box skip was crazy, and a lot of that flame charging. The, the flame charging in these tasks, it's just, it's not that it's inhumanly amazing, it's just that it's satisfying, you know? It's like, this is like the epitome, the epitome of human achievement, I think, is like the task of a Spyro game, you know? I think this is kind of what a lot of us, you know, mere mortals kind of go for, in a way. Beautiful. Again, Sproder manning through all of that with an extra juicy double jump at the end. Now, every portal in this game that isn't already unlocked is going to be underneath where the portal normally spawns. So, um, you know, basically for the ocean speed where you just go underneath. The same is true for any other portal that hasn't been unlocked yet. It's just underneath the map by like a, you know, a few feet. Man, I remember learning this level uh, when I was learning Spyro 2 100%. And dude, just this technique here that he's doing of Interesting that he grabs it like that. It's I'm pretty sure it's not optimal to do it that way, but I guess the way he was collecting these guys is just it's different than normal. Huh. I, I almost I, I hate to be like a task splaining Laponia here, but I feel like some of this collection here is actually not the exact optimal routing, but maybe I maybe I don't understand something about it. gotta consider that this is on emulator as well and not on console, which probably affects the cycles to some degree. Hitting the last guy right at the very end. That's really cool. I didn't even know you could actually take like a quote unquote death abuse on the last enemy like that and still get away with it. I would I would have certainly thought that the death because this is true in other mini games in Spyro 2 and 3 is if you die after collecting the last thing, well, the death will, you know, the respawn from the death will override you completing that. Like not not in a good way like it happened there, but like in a bad way. Ah, uh, this reminded me of my early Ripto sort of route here. Going over that straight to uh Spike? What's his name? <laughs> Crush. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? It's definitely not Spike. Before you get to the castle dungeon. And yeah, you know, I think uh, normally with these Spyro 2 like runs, the, the most like boring, like downtimey part of the run is going to be the bosses. 
like, you know, whether it's a TAS or like a world record or a brand new player, these bosses are going to look pretty much the same through the whole, through the whole way. The only thing with, uh, with Crush is that you, uh, you just take a few damage abuses. Normally in runs, actually, they don't, I'm pretty sure they don't damage abuse the blue one. They just damage abuse the, the yellow one. He also took another damage abuse right there on a <laughs> fucking hitting Ripto in the ass. It's funny with that Ripto right there because like, if you f if you uh, hit the Ripto in the gulp fight, then you get a you get a skill point. But in this fight, I guess you just don't get anything. So, based consistency there. So yeah, my re my logic I think is that he's taking more death abuses than you would normally see in a run because he's able to manipulate or like know where the sheep are gonna fall. Whereas in a normal run, you wouldn't know that. Like, you know that sheep would fall if you're at green sparks or below, I'm pretty sure, but not exactly like that they're going to fall right next to you. You're, normally, they'll fall, like, on the other side of the thing and, you know, take time to get them. No, crush! <laughs> the best Ripto impersonations in the chat here. Attack interrupts. I'm not familiar with that. How do you AFK for a sec, but you're back now. There's a way to do that without taking- I'm trying to read this, and it's probably slower, but it's a little bit of him to... So it looks like we have like a TAS a Spyro 2 expert in the chat, Catriel, so, you know, be sure to be keeping your eye out for, if you're watching on YouTube for their chats. I'm sure they're going to be giving a lot of interesting uh, insight that goes beyond my realm of knowledge here. Ah, on and play, man. These loads take extra long because of the emulator. It's so annoying. By the way, you'll know that uh, you'll notice that I actually. Uh, oh yeah, the double frog, the fucking double frog, big. Oh my god, that. Sh can I just watch that one more time? I'm sorry. The double frog, the double frog, dude. It's look at this. You got two frogs. Proxies off this one, or no, double jumps. Proxies off that one, and then extra proxies off the second one. Isn't that fucking crazy? A double proxy. This was a, a strategy that was thought to be TAS only for a really long time. That was known about for a while, but it wasn't until Blunt Bows started incorporating uh, that strat into his, just his normal 100% and any percent whatever grind that it was actually. Same, I believe Spora maybe as well, I'm not sure. But I know Blunt Bows was like a big, a big, one of the few people that actually went for that. And God, what a beautiful gulp skip there. Normally, that clip out of bounds that you just saw there takes forever, even among the top tier runs, takes like a while of shimmying against the wall just to be perfectly on the correct seam. And then you gotta do like a specific set of inputs. For a task situation, it's like you can do this frame perfect stuff like that. And so it's just extra satisfying to see a gulp skip go that smoothly. Yeah, gulp skip in 0 0.01 milliseconds. Yeah, that gulp skip was nuts. Spyro 2 speedrunners in the chat definitely can appreciate that. But yeah, man, that double frog is so fucking cool. But yeah, what I was going to say before the double frog there um, was that uh, <laughs> the emulator like is stretched out. Uh, for as advanced and as long as Laponye has been around, his fucking video it looks like this. His video looks like stretched out, like fucking wide Spyro. Which I know for a lot of you casual viewers here, you don't mind that, but... For me, I, I can't bear to have this game in anything that doesn't, like, at least somewhat resemble 4x3. It just feels weird to me. So even after all these years, Laponi is still posting his tasses and fucking stretched out BizHawk 16x9. When will he learn? When will he learn? Probably never. That's okay, though. I think I finally come up with a way. <laughs> Who is Tass? Yeah, and a thing about that gulp fight that I wasn't really talking about, but um, is particularly interesting with Tass's is that um, uh, he could really manipulate uh, the double and triple hits so that that fight goes a lot more quickly. Like if you get lucky, gulp will drop like two rockets, which will allow you to shoot two rockets and then you can hit a bomb all in one, you know, what should be one, you know, cycle. Very nice. Barely making that penguin proxy to get around to Dragon Shores. Dragon Shores is one of those portals that's underneath, but this Dragon Shores in particular is like really far underneath. But with a lot of like the more uh, real life, um, how do you say, like IRL doable strats of that, it is still pretty hard to hit that uh, portal uh, without a swim in air. Now what he did there was the uh, Dragon Shores out of bounds with the extra getting up on the shelf, which is just extra difficult and ballsy. That's only so, that's something you'll only see from like top runners of this game. Most people will get that out of bounds barely like myself and then land in the water and then have to go all the way around. So that was cool that he did that. And of course uh, he did all that shit just to get the, uh, the permanent fireball, which is what he grabbed out of bounds there at the end. 
Uh, and now the boss rush is done, and the real run begins, as is, um, you know, the status quo of pretty much any Spyro 2 speedrun. Um, you basically want to go to the end of the game first in order to grab that early fireball. Now, notably, um, Laponia is not grabbing Ripto er early because I guess, you know, he's going to buy the, the abilities from money bags. So I guess he doesn't need them from the Ripto fight, but that is what most runs would do. And so here begins the money bag exhibition. Exhibition. Interestingly, he's doing the level as well. I'm not sure if that's necessary or po possibly it's just efficient gem collection. I can only assume. What's up, Jack Carey? Yeah, it's kind of a funny thing when we talk about like optimal gem collection in Spyro games, especially in Spyro. Again, remember that my expertise is in Spyro One, but it seems like the reason he's he's doing this level is just to get the the whatever few hundred gems at the end. <laughs> again, taking a death abuse right on the last thing. Very dangerous to do. You do not see that in normal runs because again, if you if he were to probably death abuse like a frame earlier, that death would have happened before the level before the collectibles all collected or whatever. So yeah, efficient, even though it doesn't look like it, doing a flight level like that is pretty efficient gem collection. At least I'm assuming for Spyro 2. It's true for Spyro 1. Can't imagine why else he would do that shit. That fucking flight level sucks, am I right? <laughs> That's my, my whistle impression. <laughs> hey man, if you guys have made it this far into the video, can I please get a letter M in the comments for money bags? I know, I'm cheesy about it, I know. But hey, if you made it through the boss rush and you're here to- dude, We're at the actual run now. You know, let's get an M in the comments for all the true money bags appreciators. Hello? <laughs> you gotta love preserving the momentum to land in the water. <laughs> Talking to money bags from the water, shit's funny. Damn, people typing mom and shit up there, look at the teamwork up in this chat. You love to see it. Look at those. I mean, dude, I'm going to go back one more time. I mean, just look at those flame charges on, on these things right here. Look at this. So far away. I mean, like, even for Spyro 2's physics, those are really far flame charges. And the flame charges, when you have fireball, um, there I've noticed, you know, just in my time running 100%, it's a lot harder to actually hit flame charges with fireball because you have to be perfectly lined up with the thing you're trying to hit from afar so that when you fireball, it'll hit the thing. Because fireballs are like, it's like shooting a sniper. Basically, the fireball in this game is like going around CSGO, no scoping an op, dude, like a fucking sniper rifle. Like, if you're not perfectly lined up with the thing you're trying to fireball, it will miss. 100% it will miss. So it seems like, you know, when you watch good runs like this or Tasses, it seems like this fireball is so overpowered, but it really takes a very skilled user to actually save time using fireball. Going down to these guys. Oh, very ballsy with it. He doesn't give a fuck about these guys. Yeah, there's like a way you can go down there where the sharks don't notice you. I think that's probably what happened there. I've seen uh, other runners do that before. Of course, I'm too scared to, to go for that. One thing about this level is when you sequence break it, uh, you'll notice that he was swimming and then went back out of the water there. There are ways that you can like um, go back out of the water and get stuck in this level and have to fully exit. So you have to be careful with uh, with uh, how you navigate this level in a speed run. All right, submarine time. Damn, you can just skip that? What the fuck? Did he just like frame perfect skip that? He like skipped the whole animation of him going under and everything? That was kind of neat. I didn't even know that was possible. That was just like one frame to the next, boom. That almost looked like a splice that was like so quick. Yeah, once again, we are watching Moneybags percent here where uh, the goal of the run is to uh, buy everything that Moneybags has to offer in the entire game. Do every Moneybags interaction. So at this point in the run, we've seen Spyro, uh, we've seen Laponia go all the way to the end of the game, get early fireball, did not get any of the extra abilities, and now we are curving our way back through uh, Autumn Plains. I guess there wasn't much to collect from money bags uh, in Winter Tundra. There's just Head Bash and then, um, and then Canyon Speedway, which I think uh, Laponia didn't even get Head Bash yet, interestingly. 
you'd think that, especially having not gotten the abilities like from early Ripto or from early theater, that he would have gotten head bash right away. But I don't think I saw him do that. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm certainly he's saving it for the end when he comes back through. To fight Ripto. At least I'm assuming this run ends on Ripto. An interesting, like, idiosyncrasy. By the way, just getting climbed there. Shout out. Um, <laughs> shout out to the fucking text that continues from the frame perfect skip or whatever. Damn. Ground a portal from that side? That's nuts. Getting on top of that portal is crazy. And it, that's like a skill unto itself, doing that what's called ground to portal. That trick has a name because it is a tough thing and it saves a lot of time of having to go around the. Uh, you know, the the outer wall, but doing it from that side, I'm sure is like even extra hard compared to the normal hard ground to portal. Um, yeah, I forgot. I was going to say something, but I forgot. I'm loving the, the gem routing in this run, though. You can tell like Laponia really going out of his way to really get all the, the most valuable gems in a level. One thing that I liked about doing 100% speedruns of this game is like the whole, the the gem dispersion. Like, uh, how do I put it? The gem dispersion. <laughs> it's not even a right. The way gems are are laid out across levels in this game is it feels a little different than Spiral One. It feels like there's bigger clusters of gems that are more spread out around all over the place. Uh, it, it makes for a lot more interesting speedrun routing uh, possibilities. As we can see here, this is nothing like. Pretty much every level he's done is nothing like a traditional speedrun would route a level. I don't even know how he got the swim in air. I don't even know that was possible on this level. Normally in most runs you'd do like a proxy on one of those little fodders. The little <laughs> the little seashells that are like with a big mouth. Those guys are funny. By the way, I gotta say Spyro 2 definitely got the fu the best fodders in the whole Spyro series. Every fodder in this game is fucking hilarious. Distribution, yeah. What did I say? D distribution? <laughs> distribution? Oh yeah, about ending on the final boss. So what's something that's interesting about Spyro 2 runs is that they're one of the only Spyro full completion categories that doesn't end on the final boss. And this was something that was considered controversial for a number of years. So much so that the leaderboards were actually split back when uh, early Ripto was found to be faster. But uh, as time has gone on, um, early Ripto has been the accepted norm of completing 100% speedruns of this game, but that leaves a glaring hole in where to end the run. So they just, so every 100% speedrun of this game just ends on the last orb they collect, um, not on the final boss, which feels weird, you know, as a casual viewer, it feels weird. That's a crazy proxy. So, um, you know, to get back to this task here, um, we can see that Laponia has not gone to the final boss yet. Possibly speaking a little bit to, you know, didn't do early Ripto for the abilities either. So this perhaps speaks a little bit to Laponia's, uh, you know, legacy, you know, ancient old runner, you know, sort of vibe in this community that he's opting to end this run, I'm assuming, on the final boss. It's kind of an unusual thing to do in this game, actually. But he might not either. I, I actually don't know. Oh, cool. I, I like this routing. Is he gonna actually do the... He doesn't need or Bear in mind, he does not need orbs. He has already unlocked, like, every area that he needs to with orbs, as far as I know. I think there are maybe some levels that you need orbs for, maybe still, without sequence breaking. But it doesn't look like he's collected a single orb so far, so it seems like this isn't gonna be, like, a... Orbless run is what it seems like. Again, these are just assumptions on my part. I'm not I have not watched this before, so this is just my assumption. Uh does early Ripto make money bags disappear? I'm not sure. Maybe it whoa. <laughs> it's bruh. Hold up. That one is cool. With the flop? That flop was nice. See in Spyro 2, when you do a double jump and let go of square, Spyro does uh flop in midair, which gave him the perfect arc to reach that island. If he had held square there, he probably would have gone above and then had to charge out of the air or like drop and charge or with some weird shit. But the fucking perfectly timed let go of square to flop and give you just that extra little downward momentum to hit that island. I thought that was so, so cool. Beautiful flaming. And again, like, you guys remember what I said about, like, the fireball being, like, a sniper rifle? Like, there's a reason why you don't see that strat in normal runs, you know? If that looked impressive, 
like, I just want to make it very clear that it's even harder than it looks to hit these snipes. It's even harder than it looks. You have to be dummy precise. That's one thing that I really gained an appreciation for running 100% in this game is that, uh, is that aiming fireballs, especially from afar, while doing like crazy movement and gem collection is truly an art form. If that's like that, that's that minuscule, like micro optimization type shit that I love about Spiral 1 is the way they optimize uh, fireballs in Spiral 2. It truly is a micro, micro optimization. Like being good at using a sniper rifle in a counter strike, you know? It's like you need to have like perfectly nuanced um, movement for that. You don't just fucking YOLO it, you know? I'll tell you that much. You can't just YOLO those flames, you know? You are gonna miss them. <clears throat> Interesting little game theory in the chat by Catriel. Moment momentum for a dialogue can lead to undiscovered swim in air. So maybe that's referring to the, um... To the, what was that level? Where he was swimming in air and I was surprised by it. Are we gonna do popcorn? No popcorn? Okay. I would love to see Tass popcorn. Yeah, again, no orbs here. Okay, go over here. Okay, going for these. Oh, there's a money bag. I was like, why is he going there? Yeah, money bags. <laughs> Forgot the point of this test. Dude, it's funny because it's like, I don't even know, having speed ran this game, I don't even know where every money bags is because you pretty much skip almost every money bags in the entire game in most runs. That one's easy. Oh, okay. So what the one in that level I was watching is, is easy, apparently. Good thing I have an expert in my chat. I, I much prefer having someone correct me now than in the YouTube comments later. That that definitely, that def at least I could be like, shut that shit down before it shows up in the comments. Uh, actually, Deo, that swim in air is easy. Like, okay. Like, you're both pedantic bitches. Let's not get that mixed up, but at least I'll acknowledge it. I would have chosen wisely. I bet it clicked right. Um, actually, actually, it's a uh, fentanyl. <laughs> I've been fucking talking about that shit all day. The fucking, the undercover cop acted like a homeless person. Um, I'm looking for the little blue pills with the 30 on them. They call them perk 30s on the streets, but I believe it's actually fentanyl. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm a homeless person. You know where to find me. <laughs> Dude, man, again, this fireballing is just ridiculous, man. Just ridiculous. Like, how did that hit? That fireball looked like it was gonna miss. Take the title. Yeah, this is the one place you get to be the expert. Yeah. This is the one place you get to be the expert. I know, right, LD Chan? Like, these, some of these, like, flight levels, just these levels that are really heavy on the fireballing are just, like... I, I've already made the point that it's extremely impressive to hit fireballs that, that uh, accurately. Exactly a thousand gems. I'm assuming we're getting head bashed at this point. Weird that we're not going back to uh, Summer Forest yet. Did we already talk to all the money bags is there? How far into the run are we? Oh, we're like getting near the end. I guess we already have talked to damn there isn't a there isn't that many money bags is in this game. Interesting. Oh, that was sick. I love that. I love damn and that was a gorgeous penguin proxy. That was like as high as a penguin proxy could go right there, I'm pretty sure. That was fucking beautiful, by the way. Can I just I'm just wanna watch that section one more time. That this is like that this is like that task magic that you won't see anywhere else. Look at this. So the door opens. As it's opening, you get a crazy boost. And then he fireballs the penguin into himself. I didn't even see that. Normally, you just charge into him, you know, to have a consistent knockback. Dude, that was so sick. That was just like, that was the best part of the run right there. Just those fucking five seconds. That was so sick. Okay, we got another game theory. What I'm thinking of is if, is if any characters are standing next to water and you can maintain a dive when you talk. Zozeps, hey. Is it, are, is Catriel right or are they wrong? Let me know in the YouTube comments. Where are the real Spyro 2 experts at? Catriel claims to be a Spyro 2 expert, but I want to see the real nerds show up in my comments. 
Is that how swim in air works? Sometimes? Let me know. The early uh, fireball there to take down some of his health on this cycle. That's really cool. They do that in real time runs as well. I'm looking for the blue M30s. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the that's the transcript. Uh, I'm looking for the blue M30. I believe it's actually fentanyl. GG. Hit the time, baby. Well, that was a beautiful run. That run was about... 24, you know, take off a minute for, for the, you know, Sony, you know, for the Craigasm intro. Let's say that was like a 23 minute run. Really nice. GG's in the chat for this beautiful task. And big shout outs once again to Laponier, um, one of the legendary, legendary um, tasters of Spyro. This guy actually, I mentioned this earlier, but Laponier made the first ever Spyro 1 task, as far as I know. Uh, it's an any percent task. I'm just going to, for fun, I'm going to go through this, this dude's videos. If you go all the way down, all the way down to years and years ago, we will find a Spiral 1 task. Let's see if it's here. This is like bonus part of the video. Oh, here we go. Spyro the Dragon task in 41, yep, 4138. Which is, uh, how many minutes slower than world record now? Oh, this, oh, so this one's in 4x3. So I guess, I guess Laponier does know how to make runs in 4x3. Huh. Funny how that is, Laponier. Funny how you did that shit, like, how many years ago? 11 years ago, but you couldn't do it in 2023? Okay, based. Based Laponier moment. Well, anyways, guys. That was another amazing task by Laponier. Many oh, and I, the final thing I want to say about Laponier is that Laponier also uh, collaborated with Nitrovsky to make the best, probably one of the best Spyro tasks ever, which is the Spyro 3 117% task that Nitroff uh, and Laponier made. God, this was maybe like a couple years ago now, but if you haven't seen that, do check that out as well. I might even might even react to that, though that is a bit of a longer one. Guys, my name's Dayo Man. Thank you so much for hanging out with me during this task reaction. If you saw anything that you've never seen before in Spyro, let me know down below. M's in the freaking comments for money bags. And until next time, keep on spiroing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Damn.